Happy New Year everyone, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. Um, the home edition again, we're in the greenhouse at home getting a few more little jobs done. Uh, it's had a bit of a tidy up in here this last over this last week, uh, getting it ready for the new season and I've got uh, a little bit of footage to show you just where I'm putting the plastic wrap around my bench propagator here, so I'll run that in a second. Uh, and I've also got a bag of compost on there and I've got the sensor for the bench propagator. I'm going to put that in the bag in a second to start heating that compost up for sowings I'm going to be making over the next couple of weeks, uh, which there'll be quite a few of them, I think, coming up. So um, I'm going to have as a whole 100 litres there of compost just to get the season started. And this plastic wrap will keep the heat in the propagator. I've also got a little frost buster heater in here as well, just, just a tiny one, and it just keeps the edge off the temperature. And I've heard a, a lot of people mention it helps with that lift of the temperatures of the propagators. I know um, Tony Smith mentions this quite a lot. Without that extra heat, your propagators can struggle to get up to a temperature and maintain it. So these little heaters in your, uh, in your growing space can help moderate those temperatures for you so that your propagators aren't struggling that much. Even though this is, a, as I call it, the beast, it's, a, it's very good and it will get up to temperature. I do like to keep the rest of my sowings that eventually will cover this bench down here um, over the next, well, towards the end of this month, they'll start to be on there and um, it will keep them in a nice temperate um, climate, if you like, before they go down to the polytunnel. So I'll crack on with that now. I'll show you my little bag of compost there and I'll put the sensor in and we'll move on. <laughs> so this is my bench propagator. I'm at home in the greenhouse today and I lined it with this black, th thick black damp proof membrane. It's the same stuff as what's on the top here. So it's nice and thick. I lined it with that and stapled it all down nicely. Then I put a layer of this thickish, it's actually an inch thick polystyrene all along the bottom, up the sides and up the ends. Put an inch of sand in. Uh, I used a uh, builder sand for that, the soft sand. And then I've wound backwards and forwards a soil warming cable and put a couple of inches of sand on the top. The whole thing is controlled by a thermostat up here to keep the temperatures right. And I've got a framework on the top which I wrap a covering round which is what I'm about to do today uh, to keep the heat in here. So I can set the temperature on the thermostat and have an enclosed large propagator. So this whole thing is eight foot long by two foot wide. And I've got the insulation which I took off last summer when I no longer needed it. And it's going back on now. Apologies for the rustling. But this simply just goes over the top. So it, it ends up, it will be wrapped down the back and then there'll be a flap left at the front which I can just open to access it. It's fairly simple stuff. So it's my bale of compost, oops, I've just got a pen, just stabbed a hole down into the middle with it and I've got my little sensor here that was in the sand on the base of this, just going to feed that down into the compost bag and that will now mean that the bench underneath will get hot enough to heat this as well and when I've got a final wrap of plastic around the top of this propagator because so I've got another roll of this stuff, this bubble wrap in the loft and it's a special greenhouse one that I bought a couple of years ago. It's a double layer, double thick layer and I'll, I'll get some more out and finish this off and then this will heat up in a couple of days so that's all good. I've also got a standby bag in the back in the back kitchen at the minute and I've got pots of compost on my windowsill propagator in the kitchen as well. And that's what I'm going to be sewing into right now when we get on with some aubergines and some peppers. Okay, so I'm going to get on with sewing these. And this first one is aubergine. Now, last year I grew a new variety to me. I went away from my normal. 
and they weren't particularly brilliant to be honest considering we'd had a good summer most of the year they should have been really good so i'm going back to my old favorite which is money maker these have done done me proud in in years gone by yet there's nothing special about them but they grow and that's you know essentially what you want and i am in a northern climate so if i was a bit further south and had a bit of a warmer climate i might be tempted to try some others but i'll stick with what i know works and unfortunately i can't remember what variety i grew last year but it was last year i sowed peppers and aubergines and launched green side up on the 19th of january and so i'm going to sow sow these a couple of weeks earlier because um, i want to give them that bit longer and a bit of a more of a chance to grow better uh, grow fruit and ripen peppers were brilliant last year and but they didn't mature they didn't uh, they, they were lovely green peppers and it is only a color but they didn't ripen to red and last year i tried for the first time in about five years i tried the sort of pointy ones and i think i tried an italian one and the spanish one and although they grow to a good size and they were nice peppers so you do want them to mature so again i'm going back to an old variety which fairly common californian wonder and they're what i would call a box pepper they're sort of a squarish type thing and this is what i'm going to grow this year i'm going to give them a couple of weeks extra so i'm sowing at the start of january as opposed to the I think it was probably the 18th I sowed these last year. Uh, but the process is the same. It's just get them in some compost, spread them out as best you can. And then, incidentally, these little compost trays that I've got here, they've been on a propagator all night in the kitchen. It's just a gentle heat propagator, not thermo. It's not thermostatically controlled. It hasn't got a temperature that you can set. Just a gentle bottom heat. And it's just warmed them up enough for sowing. And then these will go back on that propagator on the windowsill. And they'll, they'll come through in a couple of weeks. And incidentally, this soil I'm putting on top, this compost, that's also been on the propagator all night as well. So it's warm to the touch, noticeably so right now, as well as it's so cold out. So they're sewn, I'll go and put them on the propagator, put the lids on them, if I can find them, I don't know, I've, yeah, I think they are in here. So the little lids will, little lids will go on them, like so on the top of my propagator in the kitchen. And uh, jobs are good. One. Incidentally, They've got these things on the top to let air in. Keep them closed for now until you see them coming through and then open them up. Again, nothing difficult, but they are long season plants. Uh, they do need that warmth. And eventually they'll come out of the kitchen, be potted on and they'll go in the beast propagator behind me. So that's them sown. Two more down, 300 to go. <laughs> Right, so that's a, a few more jobs done in the, with the, the greenhouse cleaned out, the bench ready set up. Uh, need to get some more of this plastic bubble wrap to go on this propagator out the loft, but that will, I'll do that tomorrow when I'm, all the Christmas decorations go back up there. Um, I've got a bag of compost out there heating up as we speak with a sensor in to control the temperature and that one in the kitchen. So I'm good for getting sewing um, over this next month. And I say there is quite a bit of sewing. A lot of it is flowers, some veg, and, and a few herbs so we'll get cracking on that as well but the season all starts early for me chiefly because i've got so much to get going i've got such a big plot and i want to fill it as much as possible and have as much choice and variety as possible so i do need to get going and it's probably a lot earlier than most people would uh, and that's why i do it and i've learned over the years how to look after plants um once they've come out of this warm warm space here in my greenhouse and it's not very warm you can see i've still got a thick jacket on but i've got a frost beater uh, heater in here just to 
keep the chill off it to stop things freezing solid and I've got the bench propagator here uh, which I wrap in plastic to keep my plants toasty warm in here and then when they go from here down to the allotments they'll go into one of my hot boxes in the polytunnel so I have those many will many of you will have seen them through last season I've got these great big boxes which are wrapped in polytunnel plastic to make a greenhouse inside my polytunnel this is a massive help and it it just it makes that staging from up here where plants are protected down to the polytunnel where they can be protected a bit more and then eventually they'll come out of the boxes and acclimatise and eventually go out into cold frames and then into the garden. So it's a, a continual process. But anyway, that's it for now. Um, happy New Year again to you all. If you've got a headache, your fault, not mine. Sorry for shouting. <laughs> I'm probably just giving you more of a headache. But... Um, yeah, happy new year to you. Please stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>